triple gem plus you today we are going to discuss about a particular subject matter pertaining to the big education in sri lanka uh, in particular today we are going to talk about a particular institution established a uh, few years back uh, with the uh, aid with the assistance of uh, another reputed institution of sri lanka uh, in other words we, today we are going to talk about uh, the big education unit lyceum uh, institute uh, incepted by the uh, lyceum international school with the help of the lyceum international school for this purpose uh, today we have invited uh, two uh, personalities from the uh, big education lyceum big education unit lyceum uh, first of all uh, let me introduce uh, these two uh, gentlemen to you these two gender personalities to you uh, today we have invited uh, mr upul grero uh, who uh, who is entrusted with the uh, work of teaching uh, uh, english language to the uh, bikku and bikunis uh, in this particular institution uh, we call him welcome i want sir and uh, again we are going to we want to introduce you uh, the another personality uh, mr shane block uh, who is entrusted with the work uh, uh, of teaching uh, the dhamma preaching in english to the bikkus and bikunis in this particular institution we cordial welcome him also as well i want okay. okay. moving on directly to the to the discussion so uh, i would like to start uh, with uh, with this background right okay we are going to uh, continue this discussion uh, with a question like this first of all sir first of all i would like to uh, turn towards uh, mr upul grego uh, with a uh, very simple question like this uh, actually uh, we know that uh, we have a history in the sri lanka of the big education from a very early date but there are some uh, difficult times there are uh, through thick and thin we have come to this uh, particular era with some difficulty especially with the uh, i mean that imperial sri lanka there were some threats to big education however they have managed to take this particular tradition to this date so uh, there are there are some institutions there are some lay people who aid this uh, particular big education in sri lanka so we identify a uh, good uh, trend uh, Yeah, in the meanwhile, uh, particular institution which backs this uh, big education in Sri Lanka. So I would like to uh, raise a question from the uh, from uh, Mr. Grayro. Uh, first of all, uh, you know we we know that the uh, Lyceum International School is a reputed uh, international school in Sri Lanka. They have taken the initiative to uh, uh, start this uh, big education Lyceum. Uh, I would like to ask from you, sir, uh, what made Lyceum? to initiate this uh, big two education unit lyceum and especially uh, we would like to know who is the founder of this uh, program in question you have answered yes then uh, your two questions uh, one is initiation and the other one is the founder is it yes right so when you talk about the initiation uh, i must say this is not a spontaneous initiation there has a good uh, history and nice background as well when you talk about the founder uh, obviously uh, dr mohanlal grero is the founder who is the founder of lyceum international school according to him uh, there's a significant uh, episode behind this initiation once when he was uh, flying to uh, another country i can't remember the what is the country uh, he has met four non buddhist foreigners so then uh, those uh, foreigners when they got to know that he is a sri lankan and also a buddhist uh, they were very inquisitive to know mo- more about buddhism so they were asking so many questions and uh, dr mohanlal bero is a, he is not a novice for buddhism so since he is good in english and he is superior in uh, buddhist doctrine 
So he has taught in many Dhamma school and he used to deliver preaching every four year in uh, various temples and all. So uh, he could give the maximum to those four gentlemen. So there he thought. So likewise, actually, they had a nice rapport with Mr. Dr. Mohan Lal Grero. So that was the start. This was a thought. Uh, he thought of a single person like me can give this much of a message to the people who don't know Buddhism and when they can uh, correct their lifestyle and since they are very inquisitive so if I teach my religious leaders if I give that opportunity to my religious leaders definitely that be a good service to the society as well as to the mankind so that was the start so this was uh, started uh, in a small way so then we are in the 11th year so that means we have completed 10 batches so total uh, turnaround came in the end of the ninth batch so why that uh, happened because actually the world is moving very fast it's changing every day now you can see uh, biotechnology and nanotechnology will give immense changes uh, in other words people who change after the change they can survive people who change with the change they can succeed but the people who cause the change they lead the way so therefore we thought we need a change so and also you can see our past USA president Bill Clinton he has become a Buddhist and also Facebook Mark Zuckerberg number one golf player Tiger Wood and also renowned uh, football player in Italy Roberto Baggio so all all of them are leading intelligent renowned people so if they they have not come to Buddhist Buddhism they have not by listening to uh, Pali preaching or Sinhala preaching so therefore we thought better to give the second language to preach Dhamma to the world the leading our religious leaders so as a result of it so we have done lot of changes lot of improvements so Dr. Grero and Dr. Um, uh, Mohanlal Grero and Kumar Grero both involved and both wanted to give it to the in uh, big number in a in, uh, massive way giving lot of improvements in uh, doctrine as well as the English knowledge so therefore we uh, decided in a different angle and we had different uh, implementations so fortunately I got very uh, capable and qualified well matured experience teacher lecturer to uh, do the Buddhism part so with him is Shane Bloxer right so I'm very lucky to have him so both of us got together and designed a totally different uh, course for the 10th batch so Diane uh, through my experience I have uh, noticed the most of the students who join these classes they don't have a uh, subject is not the biggest issue their problem is the fear so they join the class having the intention that uh, fear is forget everything and run but we turn them to the other side face everything and rise so in order to do that we thought attitude problem is the biggest issue 
so what initially we did was to change the attitude what is english language comparing to learning buddhism and give them the motivation and the confidence how it should be learned so when the attitude is corrected so the next step is the attentiveness so through my experience i have noticed if a person is having a positive attitude and his attentiveness is good learning english is not a big problem so therefore we have developed the course according to those two so now our 11th batch is going on we started february 16th so these days what i am doing is giving them the attitude issue and making them negative to positive so by doing that so definitely they believe themselves that they also can speak english so in order to do that we have uh, different different systems we have to do it step by step so initially we do those things so last batch gave the maximum results so it was the first time that we could produce that much of venerable monks so for the last 10 years we have produced more than 2000 venerable monks and nuns and i'm glad to see uh, somewhere around 100 of them are doing services in other country they preach dhamma and attend for various uh, religious activities so that's the plus point yeah i think uh, having listened to uh, mr ukrugrero we, we it's not difficult to understand that how important and how significant uh, it is a uh, learning english and uh, learning uh, the preaching of dhamma in english uh, to the life of a buddhist monk and a buddhist nun so uh, moving on moving on uh, we would like to uh, focus our attention to another particular area actually uh this particular institution is for teaching english basically to the uh, bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and also uh to make them uh, confident in preaching dhamma in english so therefore uh, there's another role uh, entrusted to this particular institution so i would like to move to uh, uh mr uh, shen block uh, like this with a question like this uh, uh mr block uh, we would like to uh, know uh, but in particular what are the uh, teaching methodologies or what are the teaching aids uh, uh currently used by the uh, big education unit lyceum uh in uh, educating the buddhist clergy particular bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and uh, uh and what are the uh, experiences you have and what are the uh, difficulties you confront with uh, in the present uh, context in uh, employing all these uh, methodologies and the ways of teaching english to them i think you have answered yes first of all let me take this opportunity to thank you very sincerely for giving me the opportunity to come here and discuss about the book education unit first of all like i joined this institute at this unit in uh, 2008 september that's uh, this is my 11th year so since then i have been uh, teaching right through here uh, over 2000 buddhist priests uh, we have received for the 10 years as mr ukulkero uh, mentioned and also it has been a you know there have been plus and minuses involved here in this teaching process for example now ukulso does the english part and i'm handling the buddhist doctrines and discourses so what i have felt is uh, during from the past i mean there are buddhist priests the most venerable students from this monks who know english and they know the dhamma they know english they know the dhamma but linking these together and putting it forward is a bit sort of a difficult task for them so that is where in our bhikkhu education institute yeah, in the unit upulsa has to be there because so gives them the knowledge in english and the more they have the knowledge in english it is very much easier for me to teach them the buddhist doctrines and discourses so it has to be linked together it has to be linked together so putting this to them as the professor said they are a bit shy and backward at the initiative stage but we do have so many uh, buddhist monks who are preaching the dhamma abroad 
so the teaching methods i mean uh, what i find is now we have three courses there the certificate course the diploma course and the higher diploma course so the certificate course the monks who attend the certificate course they have a very very sort of a marginal knowledge in english so the buddhist doctrines and discourses to them are given in a very very mild manner so with discussions with several uh, learned monks we have uh, positioned a program where we give them the initial we have divided it into about six modules so the life of the buddha then pali recitals and daily devotions then uh, if you take the dhammapada stanzas then sutra translations but very basic sutras now for example if we say uh, if you take in the majjhima nikaya middle and these courses of the mula pariyaya vaka you say the sammaditta sutra kathaman cha bikkave akusala mula kusala mula question like that so lobo akusala doso akusala moho akusala so we just give the initial part there in the tripitaka sutra translations for the certificate course and the dhamma points also where we drive into them in the theravada buddhism dhamma points is very very basic so that it will link with the english and the buddhism part so mr upul grero only gives in that english knowledge and the dhamma preaching practices whereas i focus on those units to them and also the pali english words right from the start so that terminology is very very important for them to carry on their dhamma preaching so that they'll have that knowledge in those words when you have to preach because with all due respect what i find out here is speaking english is one thing then learning buddhism is one thing but putting it together and putting it out is the most difficult process so you have to know both so the problem as you ask me here what i face is now since 2017 i have been going to three universities i mean uh, as guest lecturer at the i mean uh, buddhist and pali then the uh, university of anuradhapura and also at the kalambu university where i am uh, teaching these days there but what i find is the problematic areas is there when we have to coordinate with the foreign monks and the local monks so the foreign monks want us to speak all in english but the local monks the local student monks they cannot understand completely when we speak the in uh, bodhis when we speak in english so that is the areas that i face so it has to be one has to be well versed in the language of english and of course somewhat singhala to drive it into the singhalese monks in english and singhalese and also i mean the uh, uh, foreign monks but like uh, If we come up with something like Kathmandu, we could have Nibbana, Raga, could have Nibbana, and Dosa could have Nibbana, Moha could have Nibbana. So there we explain to the foreign monks in English, where there is no greed, hatred, delusion. That is Nibbana. But sometimes when the local monks are there, they might know English, but their presentation when you tell them, they might not understand. So those are the issues we come across. But generally, I see this is a good, I mean, challenge for Kul Sir and my, myself. and also it's a great meritorious deed for us so these are the general avenues that we have so when the when the basic level students come up to the diploma it is illustrated a little more i mean if you take the five precepts or the ten unwholesome deeds or the wholesome deeds it's given to them in a little bit of a detailed form but that process where that certificate and that diploma to come to that that initial part in that to this doctrines and discourses has to be given to them so with the basic things so we start say from the numerical terms of buddhism or say the anguttara nikaya eka buggalo vikkave loki upajjamana upajjara acharya manusa so then what is what is this word acharya marvelous wonderful being is born to the world so that kind of thing we focus initially so then they build up on that course and they develop their knowledge in english and buddhist doctrines and later on they go to the world to proclaim that so i am very lucky here in turn because the service that is given by upul sir is sort of i would say it's a very sort of immaculate supreme prime and i mean uh, aristocratic service where he generates the monk because it's much easy for me uh, like uh, the more they know english the more they can grasp the pali terms they can pra- grasp the suttas from the pali canon so that it is i mean like we are 
we have a good coordination, a good understanding, because it, uh, Upulsa's class is a feeder, like right, for my class. So I'm lucky to have Upulsa. That is how the general process that uh, we go about uh, in teaching the methods of Buddhism to them from a very basic manner to an intermediate uh, manner when we process on the classes. Yeah, yeah. it's very clear that uh, how uh, the, from the very inception of this institute, I think uh, we got to know that it is a brainchild of uh, the founder of the Lyceum and how uh, initially it was started and how little by little gradually it came to the present day, right? Now, uh, we know that uh, what is the utility of this institute, how important, how in significant is this for the uh, propagation of Buddhism and the uh, Buddha Sasana of Sri Lanka in particular. So, uh, having uh, laid this foundation of this particular discussion, so uh, actually we should focus our attention how these uh, practices, how these, uh, I mean, that teaching and how these uh, Dhamma preaching work in the real world and how it is applied in the uh, particular contemporary society. So we would like to uh, present you with a particular example. Actually, we are going to give you a particular... Uh, so we will see a particular uh, Dhamma talk delivered by a renowned monk. Actually, uh, that particular venerable sir is a product a product of the Lyceum uh, Big Education Unit. And uh, so we, would like, we, got, we are going to... Uh, listen to a uh, short uh, Dhamma preaching or particular Dhamma talk uh, especially pertaining to the uh, utility of this uh, Bhikkhu Education uh, uh, Institute towards the uh, dispensation of uh, Bhikkhu, Bhikkhu dispens dispensation of this country in particular or in general. Right. Uh, we are going to uh, listen to a particular Dhamma the talk uh, delivered by uh, Venerable Palanvakte Dhammarakita Tero, uh, who became the best student of this uh, institute uh, in, in the, uh, with the exam uh, held by the uh, Bhikkhu Education Lyceum. So, we would like to take you there and we will listen to this particular uh, Dhamma discussion and we will know, we'll, surely we will get to know how significant and how they have benefited from this particular institute. We would like to move to that uh, segment. Namo tasse bhagavatu arahato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavatu arahato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavatu arahato samma sambuddhasse Homage to the blessed one, worthy one, fully enlightened samma sambuddha most Venerable Mahasangha, Venerable Nuns, Devotees. We are disciples of the Buddha. We are so fortunate to be disciples of Samma Sambuddha. And uh, we have some duties to perform to the Buddha Sasana. First one is, we have to protect the Buddha Sasana. Second one is, we have to prolong the Buddha Sasana, maintain the Buddha Sasana. Third one is we have to propagate the Buddha Sasana, spread the Buddha Sasana. In order to perform these duties in this 21st century world, we need good knowledge of English language. As we know, Today, our planet has become a global village because of the development of communication and transportation and because of the economical and scientific developments, our world has become a global village. In future, this will become a global home. In this new situation, if we don't have good English knowledge, we can't communicate with outside world. We can't communicate with other areas of the world, with other people of the world. So, we, there's a great need of English knowledge for monks and nuns 
in order to propagate Buddha Sasana. And we can see, although there is a great material development, economic development in the world, similarly there is no spiritual development. There is a lack of spiritual development in the world today. In order to fulfill this uh, lack, we have to interfere. As Buddha's disciples, we can serve to the world in order to fulfill the gap of spiritual development. Although there is a great economic development, there are some sad situation in the developed societies. As an example, now in USA, one person out of five people suffering from some kind of mental problem. So in such, such a situation, we as Buddhist monks can help them using the Buddha's wisdom. For that we need good English knowledge. So, we have to learn English with enthusiasm. And uh, another important thing, there are thousands of Sinhala Buddhist people now have settled in Western countries. All over the world we can meet Sinhalese people today in USA, UK, Europe and in Australia. But in these countries there are no facilities to fulfill their religious needs. For our Sinhalese Buddhist people there are no enough monks to perform religious duties. So in, or, in order to fulfill these religious needs of our Sinhalese people in abroad, we have to travel everywhere in the world. In that situation, if we don't have good English knowledge, we can't perform our religious duties properly in other countries. Another important point, we have to pay attention to this point also, that is, the next generation of these Sinhalese people, Buddhist people, who have settled in the broad, we have to teach them for this next generation, new generation. We have to teach them the Buddhist culture, Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist tradition. If we don't go there and settle there, they can't get the inspiration of Buddhism. They can't get the knowledge of the Buddhism. They have no chance to practice Buddhism if, we, if they don't support them. So for that, we have to go and settle in abroad. In order to do that, the monks must have good English knowledge. And another important thing is, there are hundreds and thousands of foreigners coming to Sri Lanka these days because of the development of tourism. Some of these foreigners like to learn Buddhist meditation. They come to our meditation centers to learn Buddhist meditation. In that case, if we can't teach them Buddhist teaching and uh, Buddhist meditation them, it's a disadvantage. But if you have gained good English knowledge, if you have acquired good English knowledge, we can teach them Buddhist meditation. This is a great service to Buddha Sasana and this is great service to the propagation of the Buddha Sasana. And uh, sometimes we have to interact with other Theravada Buddhist countries. There are five main Theravada Buddhist countries, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Cambodia and Laos. In order to interact with the monks 
of same tradition, our tradition, if we have good English knowledge, this is really helpful. So, because of these various reasons, we monks and nuns should learn English very well. And uh, in this moment, I like to thank to the Lyceum International School and Mohanlal Greer Foundation for giving us this opportunity to learn English freely. Thank you very much. According to the, uh, the discussion that we uh, had so far, it's clear that uh, how important uh, about uh, this uh, big education unit Lyceum towards the uh, dispensation of the monks in Sri Lanka. So undoubtedly, so they have uh, flourished uh, to this particular point uh, very well uh, with, amidst all these difficulties. But it is Im also important to know what will be their future vision and how they, are, they have planned the particular authorities of this institute, how they have planned to uh, continue this particular institute uh, in uh, future years. So therefore, we would like to know uh, from, uh, we would like to focus our attention uh, uh, on this point so we, we would like to turn towards uh, mr grero again and uh, i would like to put a question uh, like this to him uh, sir what is the uh, according in your in your opinion uh, what is the future vision of uh, lyceum uh, big education unit actually uh, undoubtedly they have uh, we have done so far very good i mean that uh, we have maintained this particular institute uh, into a particular standard so uh, what is uh, Simply put, what is the uh, future vision of this institute and how you have planned to uh, continue this institute in future years? You have asked. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, although we say uh, we are in the 11th year, so I must say uh, we came to the real Bikku education unit in our 10th year. So both of us, uh, Mr. Shane Block, and myself have few discussions and we want to improve in a step-by-step uh, -step level so actually I must be proud we must be proud actually uh, to come to this level within a matter of one year so Diane uh, we may be knowledgeable we may be educated we may be mature but we can teach an experience, but you can't teach experience. So therefore, when they come to this uh, one-year course, I feel the toughest section is the certificate course. Diploma and high diploma, actually, they have come to a certain level and uh, you don't have to give the basics and they know, they know what to do and how to do it. So uh, when you talk about foundation and certificate course, You'll have to, actually lecturer will have to think out of the box. Because in that uh, criteria, we differentiate uh, diploma and high diploma from certificate course. We look into diploma, uh, higher, these foundation students in a different angle. So for example, yesterday I had my foundation third class for this year. Uh, there were 94 students. So... Uh, Previous day I had the diploma class, so still I notice huge difference when you conduct the class. So what I mostly focus is, because learning English is a continuous thing, you need to have continuous practices. So uh, what I tell is, don't expect everything from the class, from the teacher, from the books to learn. You, everybody has five senses. So use your five senses, there are enough English in the society. So I explain them, even if you are in the washroom, still you can learn English. So you must think out of the box. One action, more contact theory is the best method to learn from the society by using your five senses. So that is the first thing we introduce to the certificate course students so now uh, motivation and this method in addition to our uh, new uh, practices so the best system what I feel is 
uh, both of us had a discussion and uh, for he he also had the same problem when when the certificate students come to uh, learn buddhism in his class language barrier is there so what we did was he selected all the hard words relevant to the certificate course that he has to uh, teach in uh, certificate course he has given to me so i use them in my lessons for them to be familiarized with the words so we have system call uh, spellings meanings pronunciation making sentences things like that so that is a very important area so in addition to that i have asked them to prepare my vocabulary book that's a lifelong book they'll have to maintain that book on a regular basis so they can find out the words not from the dictionary but from the living environment so that is also another very successful system so likewise we are we have so many other methods to improve their knowledge and the motivation factor so last year we implemented when they want to sit for the test they'll have to get at least 70% of attendance so this that was the first time we impl implemented such a rule so likewise many uh, rules and regulations were implemented to uplift the standard of the course as well as to give them the maximum knowledge in a short period of time so we achieved that so as a result of it we uh, we were able to cater for more than 60 70 monks in the first year itself so now this year we have somewhere around 150 students uh, so in that particular way we want to uplift the standard of the course as well as even the certificate we have designed in a different way to give the some prominency uh, even we introduce them the monks who are performing really well the best students are selected and they are giving awarded with uh, plaques and presents so that was the first time to motivate them so in addition to that so we have designed different certificates uh, for the best students to be awarded so likewise we motivated them uh, to give the maximum to the course by lifting their standard so that was the first thing that we had done in the first year that is 10th year uh, by doing those things we wanted whatever we speak in the class whatever we do in the classroom they'll have to perform outside. So we thought they'll have to break the barriers and go outside. So we implemented the system called Sasuna Babalavana Asuna. So that was uh, uh, prepared on the stage in a different way. So best students were named and they were not informed that we are going to select three of them randomly to deliver a Dhamma preach spending about 10-15 minutes on the stage. So we tried out that. We wanted to see whether all these uh, performances are only restricted to the classroom. You won't believe that it was really successful. And after everything was, uh, after the uh, preaching that 10-15 minutes in front of a, such a big crowd on a, such a big stage, having a mic in their hand in the second language, they were really shy, but when they came out, they said, you have done a marvelous thing. Now we have confidence to do whatever we want and wherever we go, we have confidence to talk. So likewise, we have implemented various things. So our target is, our future ambition is to lift the course, the standard of the course as much as possible and making them speaking English, delivering Dhamma in English in a short period of time and they need not have to spend hours and hours to study these lessons so what i told them is you don't have to study all 24 hours to speak english even buddhism so we we have implemented uh, various other systems 
I have told them you spend only about 15 to half an hour a day. Before you go to bed, you do these practices. So we have a speedy reading system, speedy writing system, various other visualization and mind chatting system. So with that, they spend only half an hour for a day to do this uh, homework. So all the other things they learn from the society by using their five senses. So likewise, we want to uplift this system over and over again. So I feel our target is to somehow come to the level of the standard, come to the level of Pali and Bikku University. It may not be a dream, but we are trying hard to come to that level at least we can end up in half way. So definitely our vision is that. Uh, actually, it's uh, very clear from the, uh, I mean that, uh, the particular points pointed out by uh, Mr. Guerrero. Actually, every institute uh, should have a vision and a mission. And this is how they achieve their end, I mean the desired end. So uh, it is said that uh, well begun is half done. So uh, it is clear that uh, they have initiated the partic this particular institute very well. Now it is their duty and also the duty of the re responsibility of the society to uh, upkeep and sustain the institutes like this. For that, you have to have a good uh, mission and uh, the changes that you have to you have to do some changes time to time. And uh, in this particular context, so we would like to focus our attention towards the, uh, the changes that should take place in this particular institute, especially in the academic staff. So with that, we would like to focus, uh, we would like to move to uh, Mr. Shane Block uh, in this, uh, with a question like this. So uh, uh, very simply, uh, I will ask this question from you. What are the uh, new changes that uh, academic staff of the Big Education Unit Lyceum has initiated? Uh, with a view to cater the requirement of the bhikkhu and bhikkhunis of this uh, Buddhist dispensation, uh, to cater them, I mean, that, uh, uh, pertaining to the requirement of them. And what are the, very simply, what are the uh, changes that you would like to initiate uh, with the academic staff to cater their requirement in particular? You have answered it. Yes. Uh, if we see and if we analyze the past, the pattern, the layout, the arrangement has been focused. So we are working on that pattern, the layout and that arrangement for the Buddhist schools. So as I mentioned before, the initial steps of the certificate class, the diploma and the higher diploma is going. Now if you see, if you, you ask me the question vision, now this vision and this drive, this motive that we have, I do have my personal vision. And I do have a vision and a motive towards the Bhikkhu Educational Unit Lyceum. So, actually speaking, to tell you, my personal vision, because now I became a Buddhist on January 1st by conviction on to, in 2005. So, my personal vision here is not to hang about in this samsaric journey. So, if you, if you just refer the Pali Canon, if, uh, if you take the Anguttara Nikaya or the numerical uh, text where the all-knowing, fully enlightened great Buddha has preached, in the Panchakanipate, in page number 130-140, you get uh, two sutras, Patama Dhamma Vihara Sutra and Dukiya Dhamma Vihara Sutra. Where it says that whatever you do, there are five kinds of people, persons. So the fifth is the main thing where you focus your attention to Samatha and Vidarsha, that is serenity and your insight knowledge. So I have that clear vision. I became a Buddhist that in 2005 for me not to hang around much in samsara. So that is my personal vision. But I am doing this because I have two clear visions. And also if you take uh, a sutta, there is a Swakato Bhikkavi Dhamma Vini Yocha Samatha Puja. If someone is living according to the Dhamma and his discipline is okay. Yocha Samadha Pitva, Yancha Samadha. If he is also maintaining his good moral, spiritual and his virtuous life and he focuses attention on developing another's life, Pasavanti, he accumulates much merit. Tankisahet, what is the reason? Swakartu Bhikkave Dhammasati, because it is a well expounded, proclaimed, preach Dhamma by the all-knowing, fully enlightened, great noble being. So that vision links to my personal vision in the future. But where you say, but you ask me the question, where the two, uh, I mean the teachers or the lecturers, what vision they have. Now our changes are, we want to focus our attention on 
giving the student monks the opportunity to take this dhamma forward because it is not the lay people who have to take it. But they have the knowledge, they have the drive, the initiative, and they are the most welcome when it comes to dhamma. By so any local people or foreign people, they will want to listen to a Dhamma sermon preached by a person who is ordained in that order, community, in that dispensation. So my vision there is to get much of the Buddhist monks and the nuns involved in proclaiming, expounding the two true doctrines of the great teacher Buddha. So now after every batch, after every year, I put them forward, I take the batch top list and the discussions where I go to. Now I, I have done many discussions at the Buddhist channel on the TV. Then on SLBC, I have done over 600 talks. Then by MBA discussions. Then servants of the Buddha discussions. So what I do is I send them a list where all where I think that these Buddhist priests have a positive attitude. So the uh, our finest fine sir, you would should expect. I mean, agree with me that is Dhammarakita. Whereas I have uh, introduced him to all these seven. So that's our drive and vision. So there, as I mentioned, that basic level, as so said, the certificate class is very very important. So I have told them, supposing if somebody asks you, so get the basic. How do I become a Buddhist? So those levels of teaching has gone from the grassroots, that is from the home age, then taking refuge in the Buddha, then the five precepts, then if you take the Mahanam Sutra, Yato Ko Mahanam Buddhang Buddhang Saranang Gato Hoti, Dhammang Saranang Gato Hoti, Sangang Saranang Gato Hoti, Etta Vata Api Mahanam Upasako. So they are given that basic, if I have told them if a foreigner asks, okay, how shall I be a Buddhist? Then he says, Mahanam, if somebody takes refuge in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, from there he, there he is a Buddhist. So from that level they go. And then only they proceed from there onwards to the diploma. Say, if, if they, if they uh, uh, preach on a topic of the suffering, so then a Buddhist priest, when he has worked his way up, then if say, uh, somebody has where is the suffering, then he can always say, bring out a Rohita Sutra because we teach him, Apichavang Avusa, he must mean even Biyama Matte Kalebari, Sachanim Samanim. In this Fadam, long body lies suffering. So our vision for them, my vision is, one another aspect I have to mention, I always motivate them to bring out the Buddha's preaching and then give the English explanation. Because otherwise the foreigners who are very keen now, I'm, I'm invited for several discussions, for several guest lectures. So, what they, I teach them, even the foreign monks, to always bring the Pali Canon. Then, because I, I find the foreigners very much interested in knowing this Buddha's language. So, rather than we preaching, when we bring the Pali text, the Canon, the Pali term forward and then explain in English, it's well understood by them. So I build a Buddhist priest right from that basic root, right up to a position. If you take and analyze a Vakkali Sutra, they can always say, King Te Vakkali Minaputi Kaena Ditte Na Yoko Vakkali Dhamma Pasati Somantas. So he can advise that person. He who sees the Dhamma sees the Buddha. And also, when it comes to that level, I give them Buddhist talks of how to talk to the audience. For example, if they are giving a talk on the qualities of the Buddha, I tell them the, even the introduction, my dear Dhamma friends, devotees, meritorious Dhamma friends, today we are gathered here to listen to the qualities of the noble, great teacher, the all knowing, fully enlightened 28 Gautama Buddha. So this introduction, and I hope you give a patient hearing on this Dhamma. So the introduction is given, then they preach that, and at the end also we show them, now we have concluded this Dhamma Sermon, I hope you gave us proper attention and a good patient hearing and contemplate, I tell them to advise them, contemplate on the Buddha Anusati according to that, the, uh, the preaching, so that they are geared, that initial step they are showed how to proclaim the Dhamma. So when they, our vision is to focus them for much discussions, to get the exposure. So invariably, indirectly, I will be accumulating much merit. So my vision is here. I don't know whether I have 
co completed my vision, uh, I tried my motive. If I can educate another about 50 or 100 Buddhist priests who are who becomes erudite monks to preach the Dhamma, who have good knowledge in English, Pali, and the doctrines and discourses, where they can, I mean, proclaim the Dhamma, which is expounded by a great teacher to the world, I think that will pay the way, it will open, like in the Anguttara uh, Nikar, it says, five doors to Nibbana. It will open my doors also to Nibbana, because I don't want, like, till I live to teach all the time. I want to focus my attention also on the Samatha and Vidarshana, which my spiritual life will be developed. But now at the moment, I have to focus my attention with the pulsa on these marks. So those are the drives, the initiatives with the pattern layout and arrangement we have taken for the future of the development of the Bhikkhu Education Unit of Lyceum. Okay. It's very clear that uh, with the discussion that we had with uh, Mr. Shane Block uh, and Mr. Paul Grero, and uh, that uh, Big Education with Lyceum has done enough uh, so far to the uh, towards the upliftment and sustenance of the uh, Big Group Education in Sri Lanka in particular. But uh, even with the discussion, even uh, having this, having heard that uh, particular Dhamma preaching delivered by Venerable Palanwate Dhamma Rakita, who became the uh, best student in a year of in this institute uh, with this course. It is very clear what, uh, what have uh, they acquired from this particular uh, course, the Buddhist program that the Bhikkhu Education with Lyceum is delivering and how uh, they have flourished in their Buddhi uh, language learning and Dhamma preaching to this up to this point. And uh, even not only the particular, uh, not only towards the big course, but this uh, program has, uh, uh, I mean, that stood beneficial to the uh, big kunis or the uh, Buddhist nuns in the Sri Lanka also. So, uh, to give you a shining example uh, of the uh, how the big kunis have, uh, love, uh, I mean, that benefited from this particular program. So now you would like to uh, uh, take you to a particular video uh, discussion video dhamma discussion that uh, we had uh, with a uh, rena with a particular i mean that uh, very uh, clever uh, uh, buddhist nun who became the first of the uh, i mean that who became best student of the particular uh, uh, particular course in this particular dhamma uh, discussion uh, dhamma institute and uh, uh, she is none other than uh, Venerable Bhikkhuni uh, Varalde Nirveda, uh, uh, who, uh, who is skilled in uh, preaching Dhamma. And actually, you will know, you will get to know by, by listening to this particular uh, Dhamma talk, how she had acquired, how she had flourished in uh, Dhamma knowledge along with the language skills. And now we are going to uh, uh, listen to that particular uh, Dhamma talk. May the Triple Gem bless you. First of all, I would like to grateful you all giving me this valuable opportunity to represent bhikkhunis and nuns. Actually, I would like to describe the nature of the lessons we taught in Lyceum and its practical value for a life of a nun. There are three courses we have to follow under three categories. The first one is Certificate in Buddhism and Certificate in English. The second one is the Diploma in English and Diploma in Buddhism. The third one is the higher diploma in Buddhism. Without any age level, we can study. When we are learning Dhamma, we have to learn a lot of things. We learn the life of the Buddha, the Pali recitals and daily devotions, what we need and what we are using every day in our day-to-day -day life. 
and numerical terms. So the translations from Pali Canon, Dhammapada stanzas with their meanings and their stories. The Great Book of Protection, Abhidhamma and Pali words. Uh, at the end of the course, at the end of one year, we can gather more than 500 Pali words and we have a uh, wide knowledge Buddhism in English. So I would like to remember when we are learning uh, English, we learn so many things. Uh, we learn how to, in the basic level we learn, from basic level we learn how to make a sentence, how to read, how to write and all those things. Uh, using uh, uh, new methods. Our teacher teaches us very cordially. So that is easy for us to do our education because this is not our mother tongue. As the second language we can easily do when our teacher is very simple. As a nun who has followed this course last year, uh, I would like to remember these all facilities, these all benefits we have with free of charge, without any payments. We learn English from our childhood but we don't use it always. Uh, we are very shy to learn, shy to speak in English. At the second term, uh, we must go in front of the class and we should uh, do a Dhamma preach or any other talk under any topic as we can. Then it will break our stage fear and our shy. At the third term, when we finish the course, at the third term we have to face an examination with Dhamma preaching and writing paper and speech and spoken test. So our attendance, our dedication and our free practice will make a most outstanding venerable students from that exam. When we are surviving in this uh, society, uh, we have so many religious works to do, uh, not only for monks in this present society, uh, nuns also have to attend so many religious activities. There are so many educated nuns are there, but using English, we are very shy to do some things. In my case, uh, when I was uh, doing uh, my meditation programs or any other uh, religious activity, uh, I also very shy to uh, use English language. But 
as a student of this course who followed this, uh, after that I have gathered more knowledge from the, there. So I would like to uh, prefer English books and more uh, gather more knowledge and I would like to uh, take and give uh, them with our uh, lady votees. Uh, finally, I must thankful who is the scene behind of this meritorious, enormous and great effort. Uh, that is Mr. Uh, the Honorable Minister, Mr. Mohan Lal Grero and Madam Grero and our two teachers, uh, Mrs. Ruanthi and the whole Lyceum. I would like to uh, wish my wholehearted blessings to them and may the triple gem protect and bless them. Having listened to the uh, Dhamma talk uh, delivered by Venerable Nirveda, Venerable Veral Nirveda Bhikkhuni, I think uh, we get to know how uh, she has flourished in her Dhamma knowledge and the language learning. So uh, I think uh, with that we are going to uh, conclude uh, our this program, uh, this Dhamma discussion, this discussion uh, pertaining to the uh, Bhikkhu Education with Naisin. Before that I would like to focus our attention uh, to uh, Mr. Pulgrero again. Sir, do you have any other personalities and who any other group of people or particular individual that who was who were behind this particular program from the very, from the very inception and who had been who have been uh, helping it throughout and if if there are any particular personalities or particular such group I think this is a time for you to uh, add that. Yes, Dan. Actually, uh, captain alone can't win matches. We have a strong team. So in that team, uh, I must uh, specially mention uh, Dr. Mohan Lal Grero and Dr. Kumar Grero. Actually, they are giving immense support. They don't want to come front and show their faces. They don't want to say that we are the people who conduct this. They are always behind the screen and giving immense support. So I think uh, they must be uh, thanked and they get, they get enough of uh, merits because of these things. So in addition to that, I think I'm really lucky to have a uh, sir like uh, Mr. Shane Block because he has enough of knowledge, enough of knowledge. He's, I, I think he, he must be the leading uh, person who uh, con con uh, conduct in these classes because he's well educated and he's well matured and he has enough of experience. So and more than anything else, he's a good supporter. So I'm very fortunate to have a sir like him. So even the venerable monks and nuns are really fortunate to learn Buddhism from sir like Mr. Shane Block. And also, uh, don't forget, uh, Diane, we are doing everything free of charge. So we are giving two gilampasa within the three uh, hour period, all five days. They are also sacrificing a lot. So the uh, people who make uh, all these gilampas and who are involved with all these issuing tutes and in the office staff and the security and the other whoever is involved actually I must say they are doing a meritorious thing to our uh, course towards our course so thank you very much for everyone uh, all the best good luck with that uh, I think uh, having heard those uh, thankful words from Mr. Pulgrero so we would like to uh, wind up this particular discussion that we had pertaining to the uh, big education with Lyceum. I think uh, we, we wish them uh, to continue the same process uh, in the future as well, uh, benefiting the Buddha Sasana and the uh, Bhikkhuni Sasana in particular. And uh, it will uh, live long uh, in the future, benefiting the society in general. Thank you very much for. Uh, they are partaking this particular uh, Dharma discussion and with that uh, I would like to again thank uh, Mr. Upul Grero for coming here and parting this particular discussion uh, who is responsible for uh, teaching uh, English for the Bhikkhu and Bhikkhuni uh, students in the particular uh, Bhikkhu education with ICM. and again I would like to thank Mr. Shane Block for partaking this uh, uh, particular program today who is uh, the teacher responsible for teaching Dhamma in English. 
especially the preaching dhamma in english so with that uh, we would like to uh, conclude this program and uh, i think it is a success that we uh, discuss so many important uh, points today uh, that how uh, this uh, big education with lyceum will benefit the uh, dhamma education in sri lanka especially uh, the propagation of dhamma in the world may the noble triple jump bless you